This is a review of how to make a clickable button area on the screen using nested conditional statements. So to start out, I have my setup method and my draw method. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle on the screen, or rather probably a square. It's going to be my button area. So I'm just going to give it a fill so it's distinguishable from the rest of the screen. And I'm going to say rect, then I'll say it's um, 100 over. Let's have it 150 pixels down and I'll make it 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Okay, so I'm gonna play it now. Let's see what that looks like. Yes, there we go. That's gonna be our button. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need a mouse test equals true in a conditional statement um, to say if the mouse is pressed, carry out an action. So let's establish an action. Let's just have um, some text that says you did it. And we'll put that, I don't know, let's put it at 300 and 400. So now, oh, <coughs> excuse me. So now if you um, press anywhere on the screen, inside the button area or outside the button area, anywhere on the screen, you're going to get that um, text appear. So that's close, but not quite what we want. We want our clicks to be contained inside this designated area for that action to be carried out. So for that, we're going to need a nested conditional statement. We're going to need another conditional statement using the mouse x and mouse y variables to check where our cursor is on the screen to see if we're inside the square. So since the um, left edge of my button is at 100 um, pixels over, I want it to say if mouse x, so if the x position of my cursor is greater than 100, then I'll know it's to the right of the left edge. and then I'm going to use the logical operators um, and, and now I need to check the right edge of the square. So if mouse x is less than, so I'm going to take the width of the button, 50, and add it to the left edge, 100. So I know this right edge of the square is at 150. So I'm going to say if mouse x is less than 150. Okay, so I've got the left edge and the right edge. Now I need the top and the bottom. So I'm going to use another ampersand ampersand for and. I'm going to say if mouse y, so if the y position of my cursor is greater than, um, in this case, 150 pixels down. I'm going to say greater than 150. Another ampersand. And then if it's um, less than the bottom of the square, sorry, um, if it's the vertical position of the cursor is less than the bottom of the square. So that's the top of the square plus the height. So that's got to be 200. So if mouse y is greater than 200, open another curly bracket. And now we need to make sure we close another curly bracket, like you see now, um, with a cursor next to this closed curly bracket. A couple boxes here. The same thing if I put a cursor here. You'll see that one closes here. This one's also closes the whole method draw. So now the action will only be carried out if both mouse press is true and the mouse is between um, the parameters we've established here in the second conditional statement. So now I have to click inside to get it to appear. Oh no, have I made a mistake? Probably I have. Let's see. Ah, yes, here it is. Very common mistake. One of the common mistakes you miss if you put one of your um, inequality statements going in the wrong direction, there's, it won't work. So to make it less than 200. Let's try that again. Sometimes it takes a second for the font to load anyway, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. So here we go. Um, you may notice that this, of course, will only be true when I'm pressing down on the mouse. I'm sure you can hear that clicking. I'm positive that's not annoying or anything. So um, the next video will be on how to make sure this action stays. We'll call that the action, quote unquote, stays even if I re release the button. So I put the button in your life, if you flip it on, the light turns on, the light stays on, even after you've taken your hand off the button that turns the light on. All right, that's that for this one.